Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio, here live with James Jacob Prass. Jacob's live in California. Uh, Jacob's back in the States. Jacob, uh, one of the believers had the question, if someone preaches a nihilism, are they in essence preaching a false gospel? Annihilationism. Are they preaching a false gospel? Well, it is more like what Paul described in Galatians chapter 1. It's not another gospel, but it's a distortion of the gospel. It's not another gospel, but a distortion of the gospel. Let me look at this again. We've talked about this passage multiple times. Okay. Revelation chapter 14, verse 11, being one case in point. The smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day and night, those who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Now that term, <clears throat> forever and ever, and yau tau and yames, is the Greek translation of the Hebrew olame olamim, from age to ages, it should be understood. Unending, it is an idiom for eternity. That same idiom is used for the eternal high priesthood of Christ, for the eternal glory of God and for our salvation. Thus, if hell is not eternal and conscious, on what exegetical basis can anyone say that heaven is eternal and conscious? If hell is not, it's the same terminology. We have people like David Reagan who are getting a pass simply because he's pre-trib. So the pre-tribulation of people will give him a pass. But at his recent conference this year in the United States, he did a featured message teaching in defense of annihilationism. There is no exegetical case to be made when you compare the way the term enyao tau enyao nes is used in other passages. It's just not a good case. Now we've talked about this as well concerning John MacArthur and, and Phil Johnson and John MacArthur's defenders, Jimmy DeYoung, who say you can worship the Antichrist, worship the image of the beast, take the mark of the beast and still be born again and go to heaven uh, in direct rejection of the plain meaning and teaching of Revelation chapter 14, verse 11. David Reagan does something else. Now, both of these men are again from the pre-tribulational camp. You've got all kinds of pre-tribulationists now, probably the majority of them heretical or just silly. The David Reagan camp is the annihilationist premillennialism. The John MacArthur camp is, you can worship the Antichrist, take the number of the beast and still be saved, form of pre-tribulationism, subscribed to by Jimmy DeYoung, Phil Johnson, and others. You know, you've got this hyper-dispensational, Bullingerist dispensationalism of Randy White, who's promoted by Jan Markell. He teaches that the church is not under the New Covenant and that the seven churches in Revelation are actually seven future Jewish synagogues during the last seven years of history. But it's okay, he's pre-tribulational, so Jan Markell will promote him, irrespective of the fact that he's a heretic. She'll still keep him on her website and so forth. She'll still have David Reagan, or has had David Reagan, on her radio station. These things are dangerous. All forms of deviation from the fundamental teachings of Scripture take place among premillennial. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blocked that. Among pre-tribulational Bible expositors and and, and, and leading figures in pre-tribulationism, uh, we've pointed this out before. You had Ed Hinson sit there while Jerry Falwell embraced an open antichrist, Sun Young Moon, who said he was the Lord of the Second Advent, that Jesus failed and he came to succeed where Jesus failed, that he's the return of Christ and his wife is the Holy Spirit. And Jerry Falwell embraced him at Liberty University. He took a few million dollars from him. And Ed Hinson didn't utter a word of protest. Again, these are pre-tribulationists. Another was Tim LaHaye, who tried to organize 
300 evangelical leaders to volunteer for federal prison in solidarity with Moon, with an antichrist. This is insanity. Pre-tribulation. That entire camp has gone mad. Now they've gone into what many of their own traditional pre-tribulational scholars admit is absurd pseudo-academic linguistics pioneered by Thomas Ice and various people like him who are saying that the apostasy, the apostasia of Second Thessalonians chapter 2 is the rapture, that the apostasy is the rapture, when in the overall context of the New Testament, the apostasy is a great falling away, and you have no real etymological argument except saying that an underlying term, epistemi, could mean a spatial departure. That becomes the way they redefine apostasy. People like Mark Hitchcock and other pre-tribulational scholars dismiss what Thomas Ice teaches as absurd. The word would be hard paid, so they say, and they're right. This came to a head at their own pre-tribulational conference in Dallas about two years ago. The whole thing is a house divided. The whole pre-tribulational camp is a house divided. You've got the hypocritical promotion of people she knows to be heretics by Jan Markell. That woman just does not care about the word of God. She'll promote these heretics. She'll promote even someone like Randy White. Well, not least of these is David Reagan, annihilational pre-tribulationism. He's a leading pre-trib figure, and he's an annihilationist. They're all deviant in some way, it would seem like. They are all in some way deviant. Now, there are some traditional pre-tribulationists who have not been caught up in this, people like Arnold Fruchtenbaum, Mark Hitchcock. But the leading figures, Tim LaHaye, John MacArthur, David Reagan, uh, Randy White, notice they're all gone into some deviant heresy and are promoted by people like Jan Markell. They just don't care. Well, annihilationism is definitely an issue. If you begin telling unsaved people that if you don't repent and believe the gospel, when you die, you'll be annihilated and you won't exist anymore, that's what unsaved people believe anyway. Make the most of this life and this world. Live nihilistically. Live how you want to. Live amorally. Don't worry about it. This is all there is. That's it. And when you die, you'll be annihilated. You won't exist anymore. So this is it. Do what you want. Now, Paul says... If Christ is not risen, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow will be buried. Paul actually says that. If Christ is not risen, we should live like Epicureans. We should live for our pleasures, because there's nothing else. But if Christ is risen, the pleasure is deferred until the millennial reign of Christ, and to heaven, and to paradise, and now ultimately to the new heaven and new earth. That is what the New Testament teaches. Well, our being with the Lord for eternity is enyau tau enyaunes, forever and ever. It's eternal and conscious. So is the smoke of their torment going up forever and ever. How are they going to weep and gnash their teeth? Be consigned to outermost darkness with weeping and gnashing of teeth if they don't exist. This is dangerous. It undermines the gospel. It undermines the preaching and presentation of the gospel. But it's part and parcel of an overall larger deception. Don't worry about the Antichrist. Don't worry about the great falling away. Don't worry about the moral avalanche. The apostasy is the rapture. Don't worry about the falling away, says the preacher, leader, Thomas Ice. Don't worry about the Antichrist, said the late Jerry Falwell and the late Tim LaHaye, they embraced him as a hero. What he openly said, he was the return of Jesus and his wife was the Holy Spirit. They didn't care. Don't worry about Antichrist. We can take money from them and we should be willing to go to prison with them in support of them. These are pre trip people, major leaders. Don't worry about eternal judgment. You, the lost are going to be annihilated. What a disincentive to repent and be saved, and what a disincentive to evangelize. Well, I don't have to worry about my unsaved family. 
they won't be with me forever, but they won't be eternally tormented either. At least they won't exist anymore. All of these things are things the devil is using. All of these things are being used of Satan. All of these things. This idea you don't have to suffer because you live in California or you live in Great Britain or Canada. Pre-trib doesn't work in Saudi Arabia or Vietnam or Iran. It doesn't work in those places. What these people have done is rewrite and reframe what the scripture plainly teaches in light of their Western experience. Forgetting that the freedom we have in Western countries largely came from Great Britain at the expense of the blood of martyrs. It cost people like William Tyndale and Ridley and Latimer and Hooper their lives. The whole thing is a pack of lies and nonsense. It is not just David Reagan's annihilationism or the annihilationism of Roger Forster in England, another one. It's not just about annihilationism or the annihilationism of the late false teacher, John Stott, a man who opposed Israel, who believed in infant baptism and a state church and all these other things, but he was an opponent of Israel, the late John Stott, a man I did not respect. Uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones, a man I did respect, warned about John Stott 50 years ago. He knew what Stott was and he knew what Stott was not. Turns out Stott is an annihilationist, among other things. That's what he was before he died. Roger Foster in England, leader of the Ictus Fellowship, the same. David Reagan in the United States, pre-tribulational annihilationism, the same. It's all part and parcel of the same last day's deception. Don't worry about outermost darkness will be weeping and gnashing your teeth. That's not going to happen. You're just going to be annihilated. You go there and you'll be annihilated or it'll be over. That's what they're teaching people. On what basis? On what exegetical basis? Comprehensively, they don't have a real exegetical basis. People like David Reagan manufacture these things. John Stott manufactured these things. Roger Foster manufactured these things. Olame olamin, enyao tau enyao nes, forever and ever. The high priesthood of Jesus in the order of Melchizedek is forever and ever. Our salvation is forever and ever. The glory of God is forever and ever. And the torment of their smoke uh, their torment is forever and ever. May the Lord have mercy on all of us and keep us in his grace and silence these false teachers. Silence these false teachers. John Stott, his book still exists. He's lying from the grave. He's teaching error from his grave. Those people still believe what he said. This is tragic. And it is dangerous. You can't bet on annihilationism. We should not pay attention to it. These people who are teaching it, and someone who's teaching pre-tribulational annihilationism, like David Reagan, this man is deceived, and he's deceiving others. Am I against him personally? No. Do I hate him? No. Do I detest what he's saying and what he's doing? Yes, because it is false, it is wrong, and it is detrimental to the body of Christ. And now, tau and now, forever and ever. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you so much for your question. God bless. speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth 
in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed for the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.